Hi everyone, my name is Angela Boldini and I'm a cognitive scientist. In this video, I'll give you an introduction to the concept of short-term memory. What is short-term memory? People have very diverse ideas of what short-term memory is. Some people think it's recalling what, for example, we heard on the radio five minutes ago or half an hour ago or even recalling what the teacher said in class this morning. None of this is actually correct. With short-term memory, we simply indicate the memory system that allows us to keep information in mind in the present moment for a few seconds. Information that, without a conscious effort to refresh it through repetition, will be lost immediately. Let's have a look at some examples. Here we have Mr. Red telling his phone number to Mr. Green. Mr. Green will then have to repeat that number internally, remembering each digit in the right position until he can find a way to take a note of it somehow. I know this is a very unrealistic example nowadays, but let's pretend, okay? This is a typical example of verbal short-term memory task, keeping information in mind as I heard it and for a few seconds. Of course, short-term memory is not only for verbal stimuli. Here you have a classic example of visual spatial st short-term memory. In this case, the task is to remember the exact spatial sequence in which the red dots appeared. So that's one, two, three, and four. This is actually nothing more than a revised and simplified version of what in cognitive psychology is known as Corsi test, which is a test to measure the capacity of visual spatial short-term memory. With the Corsi test, the experimenter taps on a few blocks in a certain sequence, and the participant has to remember the exact sequence and repeat it, tapping again on the same blocks. Going back to our task, the correct sequence would therefore be 1, 2, 3, and 4. Here you can see another classic example of visual special short-term memory test. Here the task is to remember and reproduce on a white matrix the same pattern of colored cells as seen in the matrix on the left a moment ago. So like from here to here. Short-term memory capacity can be behaviorally measured in terms of digit span, i.e. how many digits one can remember in the correct sequence, or in terms of visual spatial span, i.e. the ability to reproduce a certain spatial sequence, spatial sequence or a visual pattern correctly. As for the average capacity of verbal short-term memory, we can now say it's about four elements. You might have heard of the famous 7 plus or minus 2 average value suggested by Miller back in the 50s. But that was a very specific uh, case about digits and did it quite uh, take into account something that our brain does automatically, and that is chunking. We naturally group information to save space in our short-term memory. For our brain, recalling 4 or recalling 45 is more or less the same in terms of difficulty, but remembering 4, 5, 9, 6, 7, 2, 1, 3 is much more expensive or difficult than recalling 45, 96, 72 and 13. That's why we tend to group information together. So instead of saying that our short-term memory has an average capacity of seven plus or minus two digits, we should say that it has an average capacity of about four chunks. And with chunk, we mean a piece of meaningful information, being that verbal or visual. Why do we need short-term memory? In a previous video, we saw that we need uh, our attention system to be able to function, basically. So what about short-term memory? Why do we need short-term memory? 
Do we need short-term memory to remember information until we find a piece of paper or, or a mobile phone to write it down? Doesn't sound very likely, does it? The main role of short-term memory for a, from an evolutionary point of view is language learning. What do babies do when they learn how to speak? They repeat what their parents say, right? That's why short-term memory is fundamental to us, to be able to learn a language, or more languages, of course, but we as humans need to learn at least one to be able to communicate. Of course, there's an entire area of the literature dedicated to this topic, but I can go through it right now. Okay, so in this video, we look at what short-term memory is. And as usual, I invite you now to make a brief mental recap of everything we said so that you can start consolidating all the new information that your brain just registered. Take some notes if you want, and only once you have finished doing this, replay this video if you need to, to get some feedback. Okay, so that's all for me now. I see you in the next video.